Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Timmy Trickle, and I'm continuing to do my review of the franchise Friday the 13th. And I'll be kicking off my next review of Friday the 13th Part 4, the final chapter. Now we all know this is not the final chapter, but this is considered to be one of the best in the franchise, if not a lot of people's favorites in the franchise. Mine, if you watch my other reviews, you'll know which one mine is. But the first four of these movies, in my opinion, had they just stuck with these four and not done any more, I think this series would have been perfect. Um, but seeing as how they did continue to do more movies and everything, um, it kind of watered down the series a little bit. Um, Especially with the fifth one, but the sixth one and seventh one brought it back. But then you get the eighth and ninth and tenth, and yeah, they kind of go downhill. But let's talk about Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. Now, this was a April 13th, 1984 release. It currently holds a six out of ten on IMDb, a 25% on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 93% on Google. It had a $2.6 million budget, and it made $33 million at the box office. And this was directed by Joseph Zito and written by Barney Cohen. And um, this movie stars some pretty familiar faces uh, in the 80s. It starts off, you have Corey Feldman, Crispin Glover, Kimberly Beck, Barbara Howard, Joan Freeman, Peter Barton, Judy Aronson, Camelia Moore, and Carrie Moore. They're the twins in this movie. Lawrence Monison, and of course, Ted White stars as Jason. And he is considered by many to be their favorite portrayal of Jason Voorhees. He's not my favorite, but he's one of them. And I found out he was in his... Um, mid to late 50s I believe he was 57 when he did this movie and he did an excellent job uh, playing Jason Voorhees but this movie picks up right after the events of uh, part 3 um, spoiler alerts with these movies if you haven't seen them don't watch re these reviews until you watch the movies but all these are going to have spoilers in them because I'm going to talk about them the movie picks up um, at the end of part three, Jason's got the axe in his forehead. They think he's actually dead, so they take him by ambulance to the hospital, uh, take him to the morgue, and lo and behold, we all know he's not dead. But in this movie, there are some brutal kills, and it's right off the bat. First, you start with uh, Axel, who um, basically is a sex addict, and... Uh, is in there making out with a, a nurse and of course Jason's hand falls out of the um, stretcher and hits her and she freaks out and she leaves well he puts Jason in the one of the coolers and the door pops open and you just know it's gonna come and sure enough Jason comes out grabs his head and just twists it all the way around and that just starts off this movie um, and then, of course, the nurse, she's basically just butchered. Uh, I'm not going to really spoil that anymore, but um, he escapes from the hospital and heads back to Crystal Lake. And, of course, there's a new group of teenagers that have moved in. And the three of these teenagers, we all know from other 80s movies, uh, of course, Corey Feldman being the big one. Uh, we know him from Goonies and The Burbs, uh, The Lost Boys. Uh, license to Drive, just to name a few. Uh, Chris McGlover, uh, we know him from Back to the Future, uh, which he will do. Um, he plays Michael J. Fox's father in the movie. And Judy Aronson, she plays Samantha in the movie. She was also in an 80s classic called Weird Science. She is the girlfriend of... Um, one of the boys, not Anthony Michael Hall, but the other guy, his buddy. 
uh, she is the girlfriend, or will be girlfriend, of his character. And then, of course, Lawrence Monison, you know him from an 80s classic. He was in uh, The Mask, or Mask. He played Ben in this true story um, with Cher and Sam Elliott, which is a great movie. But Laura Sponson plays Ted in this movie. And then, of course, you got Samantha. Crispin Glover plays Jimmy. And Corey Feldman plays a young Tommy Jarvis. And this is the three of uh, what will be the Jarvis trilogy movies. Uh, Corey Feldman was supposed to reprise his role in the fifth movie. Um, but we'll get into that when we get to that review. Anyway, this movie kicks off. They all move in uh, next door to the Jarvises and... Jason starts picking them off one by one, but it's the way he picks them off is just phenomenal. Of course, you have the iconic goofy dance scene with Crispin Glover, but Crispin Glover in this movie was so happy to be in it, he couldn't wait for his kill scene. That's the most thing he was excited about was his kill scene. And of course, he takes a cleaver to the face after having that corkscrew jammed in his hand. Um, it's an iconic scene. He goes in there to the kitchen to get a bottle of wine because he had just had sex with one of the twins. And he keeps asking Ted, who in, re in real life was actually high in the movie and during that scene. And he keeps asking Ted, where's the corkscrew? And Jason slams it on his head. Christmas whips around. And here comes a cleaver right to the face. It's just phenomenal. Um, that is uh, my favorite kill in this movie. There's another kill in the movie. Um, it involves the couple, Samantha, uh, and her uh, boyfriend. She goes out, of course, she swims naked, swims out to this little uh, uh, life raft, and Jason comes out there, stabs her up from the water, but the water was so cold, she, they had to get to that scene as quick as possible. Even Ted uh, uh, Ted White had to jump in and say, look, we got to get this scene done because it's so cold. It's like 20 degrees when they were filming this. And then, of course, after she gets killed, her boyfriend comes out and he gets, oh, man, I'm not going to spoil this kill. But this one, if you're a man, yeah, you ain't going to like it. But after that, you have some other really good kills. Uh, of course, Ted, he, <laughs> he gets a knife to the back. and um, But the one kill I really liked um, was another guy and a girl who had sex, of course. But she was a virgin. And he, after having sex with her uh, in the shower, he stays around to get cleaned up and the light turns off and he's like, he thinks one of his boys is messing with him. And Jason just slams his hand through the glass shower door and grabs his face and just basically just smashes it. And that is an awesome kill. That was almost my favorite uh, kill in the movie. But I like Christmas Glover's just a little bit better. And so they're all picked off one by one eventually. And then you're left with the final girl, Trish. And then her brother, Tommy. And then, of course, another guy who is uh, says he's hunting, but he's actually looking for Jason because Jason killed his sister. Um, and the sister, like I said in my review of the second movie, was in the second movie. She was the girl and the boyfriend who got uh, stabbed through the back while they were in bed. Of course, in this movie, he, going after Jason, he gets picked off. And like I said, we're left with Trish and Tommy Jarvis. And Tommy, played by Corey Feldman, does a great job. Shaves his head, pretends to be a younger Jason. And then the kill of Jason, which was supposed to end uh, Jason's reign of terror, was phenomenal. The, the special effects, um, everything was great in that, in that shot. But... Um, yeah, we all know this is not the final chapter, but this is considered, like I said, by most to be the uh, best or favorite in the, in the series. And like I said, mine is part two, but the first four movies in this franchise 
are hands down better than the any big three, in my opinion. It's better than the Halloween uh, first four films. It's better than the Nightmare on Elm Street first four films. Um, and of course, Friday the 13th made the most money. Yeah, they've had more movies, but um, my, my thing with the uh, Nightmare uh, franchise is I only like a handful of movies. Uh, Friday the 13th franchise, I like the majority of them. So, but that is Friday the 13th Part 4 in a nutshell. It is a very good movie. It's one of my ones I watch every year. The first four are go to me, go tos for me automatically. I watch them more than one time a year. And then I would say five and on would be maybe once a year. Uh, it all depends. But Friday the 13th Part 4, that is my review. So in the comment section below, give me your thoughts and opinions on this. Is it your favorite Friday the 13th movie? Is it your least favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. So with Friday the 13th Part 4, I give it a 8 out of 10. And yeah, definitely check it out. It is phenomenal. It's got great characters, it's got a very good cast, and a, a very good Jason, one of my favorites. So other than that, I thank you for watching this movie review and look forward to my reviews of Friday the 13th Part 5 and 6 coming up here shortly. So until then, I thank you for watching. And if you like this, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to share my videos with all your family and friends. And let's talk movies. I love talking about movies. So other than that, I thank you for watching and check you later.